Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Today is January the 28th of 2021. I needed to come to you today to give you a um, warning dream uh, for things that the Father is showing is soon going to pass, come to pass, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the dream, and then I am going to give you the interpretation that God led me to, okay? All right, so... How the dream started off was that I had acquired a mini mansion, a small mansion. Just, just imagine, not one of those humongous, exorbitantly huge palace looking like houses, a mansion, but it was a smaller version of that, okay? So I had acquired it, and I was looking around on the inside, and... I noticed that my mother's decorations were inside the house, on the walls. All on the walls, there was stuff for my mom. But in reality, it really wasn't my mom's house. And in reality, my mom doesn't really have those decorations. Okay? So, I'm just looking around at the stuff on the walls, and I'm like, oh, those are my mother's decorations, and I'm not going to change them. I'm, gonna leave, I'm not going to redecorate. I'm going to leave everything just like that. So, um, I kept looking around and I was, you know, I just was really pleased with the way, uh, the house looked and, um, the ceilings, I don't know that there's any significance, but I'm just trying to let you see how big the house was. I like the ceilings were like 20 foot tall ceilings. I mean, that's like unheard of, but that's, it was just a big, huge mini, man, mini mansion, a small mansion. Okay. So. Like I said, I looked around the house a while, stuff like that. Okay, now that was the end of, of the, that part of the dream. I actually woke up and um, I just, you know, went to the bathroom. I came back, went, got back in bed, fell back to sleep. Once again, I dreamed about a mini mansion. It was a small mansion. And I'm telling you something, this was a different house, but it was still a mini mansion. It was a very small mansion. It was a huge home. And um, I'm looking around in it, and I'm looking at the different things in the house, and it's, you know, I, I like it, you know, I, I like it. I mean, it's, you know, it's just a mini mansion, and I'm, I'm looking at every different thing, and I'm, and I'm like, okay, well, I see that, and I see that, okay, well, I like that, you know, that's okay, I can keep that like that, you know, like the different refrigerators, and just, just different stuff in the house I was, I was observing with my eyes, and I was... Deciding, okay, well, I kind of like that right there and this and that, right? And my family was with me. Can't remember exactly all the family members, but I know that my family was with me. And I got four dogs in my house, and they're all white. They're all Malshis. It's a Maltese and Shih Tzu mixed, so, and they're all solid white. So there's four, those four dogs were in the dream. And then all of a sudden... Well, we were in the garage, and now I noticed that one of the dogs had gone to the bathroom on the carpet or something, and I said, oh, well, when, oh, yeah, because my son and his girlfriend um, were there in the house, and I said, and they had my car, because I said in the dream, I said, oh, well, when they get back, I'm going to have to tell them that the dogs have to stay out in the garage because they can't be going, have accidents in the house. So I was out in the garage with the four dogs, and I was home by myself. So there was the four dogs, and I was in the garage. And all of a sudden, there was like this little hole at the bottom of the garage, and there was a dog that was trying to get in to the garage that did not belong to me. And then all of a sudden, I looked in, I was in the garage, the garage door was down, and I looked around, and there, there came another dog, that dog was black, and there came two more dogs, and they were gray. So I'm looking around, and all these dogs are just coming from nowhere. You know, and I noticed that there's somebody outside the um, garage. Now, I purchased this house for $187,000. I signed a contract with the owner of the home and I gave them a cashier's check for $187,000. And as I was walking around this home, and I was looking at different things, I would say, well, that's, I got my money's worth for $187,000. I got my money's worth and stuff like that. 
So I remember repeating 187,000 uh, several times throughout the dream. So when I'm in the garage and I'm seeing all these dogs, I'm like, where are they coming from? Because those aren't my dogs. And because um, like I said, I got four white dogs. In real life, I got four white dogs. So um, I'm like wandering around seeing who is these people outside? So I go to the front door, I open the door, and there's several people outside. Several people. Like five or six people. I don't know these people. All of a sudden, there's a woman that's standing there. And she's telling me. Now, first of all, let me explain to you what this woman looked like. This woman looked like a whore. Okay? She had on the tightest pants, the tightest jeans that you could ever imagine somebody wearing I mean they were like it was her skin but they were jeans they were like painted on her body it's like she had to jump off a five-story building and shoot down just to even get in them pants I'm telling you they were so whorish her she had on a sweater and her sweater was just skin tight just showing off every part of her body all right she looked like a whore and all of her arms were filled with gold bracelets. I mean, just, just filled with gold. Her rings, just rings, just gold. She was just dripping with jewels, with, with jewelry, with gold jewelry. And this woman, when I open the door, I look at her, and I, that's the first thing I think about. Mm, dang, what in the world is she dressed like that for? You know, my mind already thinks that she's a whore. That's the first thing I think of. And then um, she starts to tell me, my mother says that this house is not $187,000. It's actually 500 and something. Now, I can't remember the actual number, but I remember it was in the $500,000 range. And they said I could not have the house for $187,000 because the house was actually over a half million dollars. And I said, well, that's just too bad. I said, because your mama... She signed the contract, and she also cashed my cashier's check. The house is mine. You know, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. And they're like, oh, well, you could get a loan, and I'm like, nope, not gonna happen. It's my house, you know. And so um, I just basically closed the door, and uh, I woke up from the dream after that. When I woke up from the dream, I thought, ooh, well, that was a little strange. And so, it immediately came into my spirit to look up 187 Strongs. Now, I know in the dream I kept saying 187,000, but that God was just, and I repeated the number several times. God wanted me to remember the 187, okay? So, I look up the, um, the, the 187 Strongs. Now, for any of you people that say that's demonic, satanic, to look up the numbers, um, you need to just click off my video and you can excuse yourself from it because I don't want to hear condemnation over something that the Lord led me to do, okay? So, um, 187 strongs in the Greek means akmazo, okay? And it means to be at the prime, reaching full maturity, become ripe, am in full vigor, okay? You're in full vigor. You're ripe. You're mature. Okay? You're full, reaching full maturity. Okay? You're at the prime. All right? So, I, I, I'm going down and I am keep reading and I am keep reading and I'm going and it says more. It says, the Greek word ekmazo found just once in the New Testament in Revelations chapter 14 verse 18, which I'm going to read that to you in a minute, but I'm going to finish you the description. Uh, ju found just once in the New Testament, the Greek verb akmazo described what had reached a point of perfection or what had become ripe. John used this verb to describe unsafe people who were ripe for divine judgment and to affirm that God was ready to act. People, I am just covered in Holy Spirit chills right now from the top of my head to the bottom of my foot. Oh, Father Lord. Have mercy, have mercy, God. Um, okay, so this interpretation of the dream is this. That woman represents the great whore of Babylon. 
um, okay, th they've done nothing. You can just go back through the Bible and read about Re Mystery of Babylon. You can read about it in Revelations. You can read about it in different, way different many parts of the Bible. And um, you're going to see that she's very wicked. She's very evil. She oppresses the poor. Um, she basically steals from them, robs from them. She holds them down. She just oppresses them. Uh, she has uh, polluted the whole world with her evilness, her whorishness, okay? And God is about to do a judgment. He is letting us know now the time is ripe. It's ripe. And right here, John used this verb to describe the unsafe people who are ripe for divine judgment and to affirm, to affirm that God was ready to act. God is ready to pour out his judgment on Babylon, which is the United States of America. Let me read to you Revelations chapter 14, verse 18, or chapter, uh, Revelations chapter 14, verse 18 says, And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her gripe, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Father Lord. Thank you. So, so it's not just Babylon. It's not just Babylon. This is this is the earth's judgment. God God is saying that the the grapes are ripe and they're fully ripe. Like 187 means ripe. 187 means ripe and he is telling us the whore, those people that are whorish, like mystery Babylon, the great whore, mystery Babylon. Her judgment is coming upon her. But if we read chapters, uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 18 and 19, I, I read them both actually. It talks about gather the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the time is ripe and God is going to pour out his judgment. So my question to you is this. Are you right with Jesus Christ? Are you sitting on the fence? Are you are you one foot in the world, one foot with God? Have you not made up your mind yet if you even want to accept Jesus Christ? Are you but are you somebody who actually thinks you're a saint of God but yet you live 100% in the world? You you're not even on the fence. You're not even half this, half that. You think you're one thing, but you're completely the opposite. I'm going to ask all of you today to just do a deep, deep search in your soul and ask God every single day to split your bone from your marrow, searching for anything in you that displeases the Lord, okay? Because it is ripe, the time is ripe, the grapes are ripe and ready for God's judgment. As John said, I'll read it to you again, John, John used this verb, verb. Akamazo, John used this verb to describe unsaved people who were ripe for divine judgment and to affirm that God was ready to act. And that right there just scares me to death for everybody. That God was ready and to affirm that God was ready to act. He's warning you right now. And I just pray that you're in a place with God where he looks down upon you and he sees no sin in you. That he sees you walking on the straight and narrow path. That he sees you wanting to please him every day. Not please your flesh. Not feed your flesh. All right. This is, this is a dream that um, it made me really nervous because I'm like, oh, Father Lord, Father Lord. Are you really truly ready to act? Is that is are the grapes really ready? Are they really ripe? So, you know, I just pray everybody's ready. That's all I can say. 
I mean, the grapes are ready. God's letting us know the grapes are ready. Are you the wheat? Are, are you ready? Are you ready to be harvested? If you're the wheat and not the tares. I love you all. God bless you all abundantly. And your family and your animals. We don't know when this is going to happen, but... You know, things are going to just start happening one on top of another. Quicker and quicker and quicker. And God is still giving his warnings. He loves you enough to keep warning you. The Bible says God doesn't do a thing unless he has told his prophets first. And I'm not, I don't like referring to myself as a prophet or anything like that. But, you know, I, I don't, I just, I just think that's a really puffed up word. You know what I'm saying? I, I really think that that's puffed up word, but... I'm not going to call myself that. I just know that God said, you shall speak what I tell you to say. He told me that. And uh, yes, sir, I will do. I work for him. And I will speak exactly what he tells me to say, no matter how uncomfortable it makes me feel, no matter how sad it is. Because he loves you. He's giving you these warnings because he loves you. He's giving you time to change, to come to him, to submit yourself, to repent, to repent, to turn from your sin and do no more. Okay, I love you all. God bless you. But I couldn't possibly love you more than the creator. The creator loves his creation. God bless you all. Goodbye.